as the president of the Southern Quezon State University in Luban, Quezon, none other than Dr. Cecilia Navasero Gascon. Dr. Gascon holds a PhD in forestry from UPLD, which she obtained under a certain scholarship. She has been a consistent honor student since her elementary days. She finished both her MS in environmental studies and BS in forestry through scholarship grants at UPLD. She also underwent postgraduate studies at the Master's School of Management under a Netherlands Fellowship Program. She has published books and journal articles on agroforestry systems, environmental science, biodiversity assessment, capability building framework, and sustainable agriculture, among others. She is the current president of the Regional Circa Fellows Association and Circa Fellows Alumni Association in the Philippines. She is also a member of various professional organizations on forestry education, environmental education, and environmental governance. Dr. Despon is a member of the Gamma Sigma Delta, the Honor Society of Agriculture, and the International Honor Society of Bicapified UP Chapter. Dr. Despon hails from Los Banos, and is in fact the daughter of one of, a, of the Circa, form, a former Circa staff. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Cecilia de Basera Thank you very much, Ms. Nova, and uh, good afternoon to all of you, and thank you for coming to listen to my presentation. The title of my presentation is Conservation and, Man and Management of Mount Balang de Lokban, Its Potential Impacts on Agricultural Productivity in Lokban, Quezon, Philippines. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will be uh, giving you a brief background of the characteristics of Mount Balang de Lokban, the initiatives that the university has been undertaking for the past uh, 31 years and what are the strategies. And these factors are important for the sustainable ecological integrity of Mount Banahaw. And we believe that Mount Banahaw has an uh, impact on agricultural productivity in the town of Lokban. I will be discussing only, presenting only the impacts on the agricultural productivity in the town of Lokban. But uh, there are nine municipalities and uh, two cities surrounding Mount Manahaw. So this is the majestic view of Mount Balaho de Lupan. It has a total area of 1,660 hectares, which is a component of the 11,133 hectares of the Mount Manahaw San Cristobal Protected Landscape. Uh, this area was converted into a protected landscape in 2010 by breach of Republic Act 98 47. So Mount Banahaw has three peaks and one of the peaks is Mount Banahaw Lutuan which is about 1,875 meters above sea level. It is considered as a biodiversity rich uh, mountain ecosystem. It is supplying um, water to approximately 1 million people in both provinces of uh, Laguna and Quezon. On the other side of Mount Banahaw, which is in Dolores, Quezon, every Lent and season it is visited by approximately 500,000 uh, pilgrims. And the people living in the vicinity of uh, Mount Banahaw consider that 80% of the vegetation in the mountain has medicinal values. So these are some of the uh, number of species that we have found in Mount Banahaw. For example, we have 358 species of trees, 19 species of vines, 15 species of palms, 39 species of ferns, 15 species of grasses, and 42 species of fungi, and uh, a lot more uh, fauna, fauna uh, or wildlife. So it is also considered as a rain mountain because it has um, an average of 4,400 millimeters. 4,470 millimeters of rain. And uh, in Mount in Lokban, Quezon, we are experiencing 262, an average of 262 rainy days. So you can imagine that almost three fourths of the year in Lokban is uh, raining. So uh, this is the uh, location of the different springs in Lokban, Quezon. If you will notice, there are uh, 16 springs. 
And uh, these springs are uh, important because, for example, the Baxiti spring, uh, number four. This is the Baxiti spring. This is the major source of water for the town of Lokman. Uh, the the Maikit spring, uh, in number ten. This is the source of water for uh, the Lucena Tayabas area, while the uh, Samil and Mal Malinaw Springs are the sources of water for uh, Kabinti and Dumishana Laguna. So these are uh, only in Lukban, Quezon. And uh, these springs are producing also for potable water. And 35% of the water from uh, Lukban is draining to uh, Laguna Lake. So these, these are some of the pictures. This is in my high falls, Tai Tai Falls. And this is the, the microsite of Mount Panama. So what are the initiatives of the university in the conservation and management? First, of course, we have the natural resource assessment studies. One, we have the biodiversity research. We engage the faculty members, the, the students, uh, both graduate and undergraduate in biodiversity research. But it is not only the university who is uh, doing biodiversity uh, researches. There are also uh, people, there are also researchers from other organizations, uh, like for example from uh, graduate students of the different universities from UPLP, UP Diliman, uh, USD who are also doing biodiversity research. And we include the uh, the data that they gathered from their researches in our in our database. So this is the uh, biodiversity or natural resource assessment is conducted in order to determine the richness and usefulness of the plants and animal species. So for the flora, we have um, computed that there is uh, 66 to 76 percent endemicity. So for um, fauna, we have recorded 226 species of birds. Eight of them are considered endangered and 20 are rare species. But um, the, endangered spe the endangered and rare species are not uh, necessarily endemic species of mamba now. So for the mammals, we have recorded 62 species, three of which are endangered and seven are endemic. For uh, reptiles, we have recorded 30 species, two are endangered, one is endemic, and one is uh, rare. And for amphibians, we have recorded 43 species, and seven of which are endemic uh, species of amphibians. So these are some of the critically endangered species of plants that we found in Mount Panahaw. So we have Kasau uh, Kasau of family Sabindasii, uh, the Makaasim of uh, family Mirtasii. We have also have the Igem uh, Bilugan of Podokarpasii. We have uh, Tang Tanghao uh, under family Melastomatasii. So aside from the natural resource assessment, we are also updating the Mount Banahaw database. So in Mount Banahaw database, this is where we record all the species of plants, animals, uh, and insects. Okay? And we are also recording the different researches conducted about Mount Banahaw, not only about plants and animals, but also on uh, the socio-economic characteristics or socio-economic uh, studies, including the different policies uh, formulated or crafted by the nine municipalities and different barangays uh, in the vicinity of Mount Manahaw. So um, there is a continuous updating of the database, and as of the moment, we have we have uh, recorded 250 researches. Uh, from different organizations, from different individuals about Mount Manahaw. We are also, uh, another initiative is the enhancing our capability in the mapping and geospatial uh, information. We have the, the GIS laboratory, which is very useful in uh, mapping and uh, 
in mapping the different areas in Mount Bananao, specifically on the various sites wherein we found the we, we found the species. So this is being located uh, in the College of Agriculture, and this is being manned by uh, the faculty members from the uh, Department of Forestry. So. Uh, in the mapping and geospatial information, uh, we we have already uh, conducted and have already mapped out the various areas of Mount Banahaw, and we have also um, recorded uh, the the various species where we, we can find the we can find in the area. Another approach or another initiative is the conservation and protection effort. So here we are, we will be establishing the Mount Panajo de Lokban Botanical Garden, which is our in-situ approach to conservation. And this will be located at the foot of Mount Panajo de Lokban. The area is about seven hectares. And um, this is the seven hectares will be divided into seven gardens. We have here the arboretum, we have the ethnobotanical garden, we have the flower garden, we have the bamboo setum, uh, we have the healing garden, this is part of the healing garden, and we also have the uh, ornamental garden and then the fernarium. So what is the, the importance of setting up the botanical garden? Because we believe that uh, conservation and protection of species can start from knowing what is to be protected. And in the botanical garden, we will be featuring uh, the indigenous species of plants that can be found in Mount Manahaw. If you will go to the community, there are a lot of uh, species that they do not know. And they are just cutting the trees, they are just cutting the, the vines, the ferns, because they do not know the importance, they do not know the characteristics of these species. So the Mount Panahaw Botanical Garden is our in-situ conservation approach so that people would know what are the importance of the species that are found in Mount Panahaw. So uh, we are starting this uh, botanical garden and um, we have already collected the, the specimen uh, from, from the area and we are uh, we have grown them in our in our nursery. Okay, so another initiative is the production of the IEC materials and research publications. This is also uh, these are the endangered species of plants, uh, endangered species of animals and plants. Uh, we have this uh, chain vine, the Scrotilodon macrobotris. And these are the species of animals that are found in Mount Banahaw, but not necessarily endemic to Mount Banahaw. Okay? But they are classified as uh, endangered species. Okay? So these are some of the publications. We have also the research journals. We have the book on Mount Banahaw, the physical, biological, and management features. These are some of the plants that have medicinal values, and then we, we recorded them and uh, publish them in a, in a book. Okay, so this is also another thing of informing the people about uh, the species and the importance of species and why do we need to conserve the species in Mount Banahaw. So um, another initiative is, is the establishment and maintenance of our forest nursery, which is devoted to indigenous species. And these are the sources of our planting materials for our forestation activities. In, um, in 1993, we were able to uh, peacefully uh, eject the farmers inside Mount Panaha because historically there were about 123 farmers who are cultivating inside the national park. But because there was an observation that every summer the, the springs are drying up, so the local government is attributed it to the farming activities inside Mount Panaha. So they decided to um, uh, evict the farmers who are cultivating inside the, 
the National Park. And uh, it became successful in 1993 uh, through the initiative of the local government, the university, and uh, of course the police force, and, and of course the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. So there was a total of 100 hectares that were occupied by the Kaininos, the Golden Kaininos, and uh, these were the sites that we are referencing right now. Uh, the approach before was to use any other species that can easily rehabilitate the areas occupied by the farmers. But uh, right now, we are continuously, we are continuously and gradually changing the species in the area by only considering the native species. So we have devoted our nursery, we have uh, created the uh, Mount Banahaw Nursery for Native Species and this is where uh, we source our uh, planting materials for the reforestation effort. So it is not only in the area that were, the uh, areas that were previously occupied by the Kaimineros that we are doing our reforestation activities. So all the vacant area in Mount Banahaw we are doing the um, uh, reforestation activities and we are using the native species that are raised or that are grown in the university. So at present we have 53 indigenous species and um, all the other organizations who would like to do uh, reforestation activities or tree planting activities have to follow the rule of the University of UC only native species. So this is the picture of our nursery. It has a capacity of 150,000 seedlings. And this is our major source of planting materials for the reforestation effort. And um, our strategy in using native species is not only true for Lokban because other municipalities are also doing the same. They are, not, they are no longer using exotic species in their uh, reforestation activities. So another uh, effort is uh, the rehabilitation that we that we were doing, not only in the areas previously occupied by the Kaininers, but the areas uh, that uh, suffered from landslide in 1982, and it was repeated in 2010 because of the uh, typhoon Bashang. So the area is about uh, four four hectares. And, uh, but the devastation runs down slope up to four kilometers and affecting uh, and affected the uh, agricultural area. So we use the uh, mapping with coconut geotextile. So this is the area before or after the typhoon basha where we uh, used coconut geotextile and up one year and eight months after uh, the Jet textile, we found out that there are already 22 species that are thriving in the uh, landslide area. So, this is only a proof that um, relatively we are successful in rehabilitating the area. But I believe that this, this is a continuous effort because every now and then, when there is a strong typhoon and when, when there is a strong uh, runoff and uh, erosion, this area is, old, is also suffering from uh, erosion. So we have uh, also doing, we are also doing the tree planting activities and this is um, an annual activity of the university involving the faculty members, the personnel and the students. Uh, but this time also involved the South Sun Command and the uh, Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So um, we planted 10,000 trees, and the uh, trees are uh, sponsored by the uh, Filipino Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So we are also very successful in rehabilitating the, the, this area of uh, Mount Banahaw. Another initiative is the capacity building of the stakeholders. Southern Sun State University is an active member of the Protected Area Management Board and we have uh, created the Institute of Environmental Governance through the cooperation with um, an environmental NGO which is the Tangol Kalitasan and we are training the members of the Protected Area Management Board 
who are the barangay officials of the different municipalities. This is also an approach because we believe that as a university, we cannot, uh, we cannot do all the responsibility in managing and in the conserving, in conserving Mount uh, Panal. So we need to have our partners. And this is through uh, the barangay officials, the local government units, and we are uh, doing the capacity building activity through the Institute of Environmental Governance. So through, through IDG, uh, we taught the, these members on the different environmental laws and what should be, what is the importance of uh, their active participation in the management of uh, Mount Bananhao. So um, uh, we are successful in educating the people, we are successful in educating all the barangays but you know, every three years we are suffering also from the changes in the uh, barangay officials. So every three years we have to do the, the capacity building activity. We believe that uh, through education, through, capac through capacitating the stakeholders in Mount Palau, that we, can, we will be able to succeed in our um, conservation and management effort. We have also partnered with several organizations um, like for example the Department of Environment and Natural Resources we have uh, we have a memorandum of agreement with the NR for the steward as a stewardship agreement for 50 years so we started the agreement in 2000 in 1982 and uh, 25 years ended up in 2007 but we are also successful in um, partnering again with the NR for another 25 years of stewardship contract for Mount Panahao de Lomban. So we have also partnership with the ERDB. This is the new uh, facility, the Clonal Nursery, which uh, ERDB uh, is spearheading. And this is also for the cloning of native species, which are sources also of planting materials for Panahao. We were also successful in getting uh, support from the provincial government and this is until 20, 2026 they will be giving us, they will be giving the university 1 million for their rehabilitation. So this is good for uh, 15 years. What are the strategies that uh, we have done in order to uh, be successful in the conservation and management? Of course, First is uh, fund sourcing. Uh, the university has no funding from the national government on the conservation and management of Mount Panahao. So we are relying on our on our partners, the rehabilitation, the research activities, and uh, capacity building activities that we have been doing are all relying on the support from our from our partners. So fund sourcing is very important. The uh, botanical garden that we will establishing has no budget also from the national government and again we are relying on our uh, private partners. Uh, next is image enhancing. So it is very easy to leverage, very easy to convince people that you are capable of uh, managing and conserving but, uh, Banahaw in particular if you have a very good image. So we have uh, created um, a positive impact on the members of the Protected Area Management Board and thus they are um, they, they, they are uh, they believe that we are competent in the management of Mount Panahaw. Uh, third is the capacity building. So I have already mentioned that uh, we use the Institute of Environmental Governance in order to capacitate because we believe that it is only through uh, capacitating the people that they can be partners in the development activities. So it is not only the members of the Protected Area Management Board that uh, we've been capacitating, but also uh, with the faculty members, with the different organization, and with our students. We're also using the NSTP, the National Service Training Program, in order to capacitate also the community. And uh, commitment and cooperation. 
it is not very easy to maintain a protected area without any budget. And it is not very easy to convince people to participate in the uh, protection and conservation effort. But the university is committed in uh, doing these things and uh, we have also solicited the help of our partners. So uh, the commitment to cooperation is very important. Uh, uh, next is organizational structure. It has to be um, in the university. Mount Banao is one of our uh, banner programs and it is already included in our uh, organization. So uh, it, it should be very clear that um, among the people in, in the university, uh, Mount Banahaw is, is included. And uh, it is made possible uh, because they are aware and because uh, we have the clear policy, we have the clear uh, structure on how to manage Mount Banahaw. And of course, uh, policy. Uh, very clear policy and policy implications on what should be done by the university is also uh, very important. So these are uh, the strategies that uh, we have done in order to realize the, the uh, success that so far we have we have been we have achieved for the conservation and management of Mount Manahaw. Okay, and as a result, uh, these are the impacts that we that we have seen uh, on the management and conservation. So we have a sustainable source of water. Um, unlike the other area, the other part of Mount Banaha, where again during summer they are suffering from a scarcity of water. Lukban is very fortunate because we have the springs, we have the rivers, and we have the, the creek, which is a sustainable source of water. But if you are going to compare the vegetation in Lukban and the vegetation in the other parts of uh, Mount Banahaw, there is uh, a very clear difference. Because there are no farmers cultivating within the Mount Banahaw and Lukban, uh, we can protect, we can say that uh, this area is relatively protected as compared with the other areas, like for example in uh, Sariaya and Candelaria area. That is why we have uh, sustainable source of water. We do not have the experience that our springs have uh, dried up, unlike in the other area where in every during summer the people are uh, complaining that their springs have dried up, but we do not experience that in uh, Lukban because we have maintained a very good vegetation. Of course, uh, the maintenance of the microclimate, Lukban is relatively a uh, cool area plus the about plus the uh, regular distribution of rain or uh, regular distribution of rain all throughout the year. So we have the, the area is. Uh, very suited to crop production. And um, we also maintain soil fertility because of the uh, intact vegetation that, uh, because of the intact vegetation in Mount Banahaw. If you're going to compare the soil erosion in the, like for example, in the area that we have um, rehabilitated, the area that we have, uh, we, we use coconut geotextile, uh, if you're going to compare uh, the, the area with geotextile has less soil erosion than the area without geotextile. How much more in the area which is uh, vegetated? Okay, so um, because of the, the absence of the farmers and because of the continuous effort of the university in maintaining the vegetation of Mount Banao, then we are also ensured of a very good soil fertility, which is uh, important also to crop production. So these are some of the uh, pictures. We have uh, also terraces. So uh, in the other side of Mount Banaha, we only have two croppings for the rice. But in Luban, we have three croppings. This is because of the continuous uh, water that is coming from from Manahaw. So uh, the, the supply of water is abundant, the vegetable growing is also abundant. Although um, uh, 
uh, sometimes the farmers are also complaining about the about the, the too much rainfall that the area is receiving. But generally, it is okay. So these are some of the plantations. So you can you can see the, the a very good harvest in the in the uh, area. Okay. So in conclusion, um, I can say that Mount Malakadilupan is an important ecosystem that contributes to biodiversity, agricultural productivity, and stable source of water to many municipalities in the provinces of Laguna and Quezon. However, the sustainability in providing these ecological services is dependent on how Mount Banal is conserved and managed. And uh, we are fortunate because although the government has given us any funding support in order to uh, conserve and manage Mount Banal, but uh, we are glad that we are the steward of this very important ecosystem uh, that supplies water not only the town of Tokban but also in towns of uh, Kabinti, uh, Luisiana in Laguna, and uh, in Tayabas and Lucena in Quezon. So uh, I hope that uh, I was able to share our initiatives and the strategies that the university has been using in order to conserve and manage Mount Banao de Tokban. Thank you and good afternoon.
university, but I believe that that was one of the, the best moves of the university to participate in uh, uh, affecting the, the farmers because if they continuously cultivate in the area, this mountain uh, of the Lokban will just be another uh, a protected area of national parks that uh, are that are severely eroded and um, they experience massive landslides. So if you will notice, landslides in Mantanao happen in just one area, and this is not caused by by um, this is not caused by human being because the air the, the landslide is coming from 1,700 meters. So it is really of a natural because of too much rain that happened in 2010 because of the typhoon Russia. But I would agree that there should be a concrete impact assessment study to be conducted on the, in order to determine and in order to concretize the, the effort of the university. Other questions or clarifications regarding the Now, a new reforestation system 
you say there is reforestation, you are doing reforestation. Uh, do you do you reforest uh, by using only one species or several species in the same area? Um, in, in our nursery, we have 53 species of native trees. So we are combining uh, these native trees in our uh, reforestation area. So we have also the design, for example, in one area, in, in um, half hectare, we are using one species. In another hectare, we are using another species. In the boundary, in the boundary we are also using different species. So we are uh, combining the different species that are found, that are uh, raised in our nursery. So we do not, we do not uh, use uh, one species only. Yeah, there, uh, it's, uh, that's very good. Because uh, the practice usually of the government and the reforestation project is planting only one species in the same area at the same time. And you have only two canopy levels, the upper and the lower. And you miss two levels of canopy. So, when there is rain, uh, yeah. Uh, only two canopies uh, cuts the water, so you have the water, most, most of the water going to the uh, farms and uh, contributing to the floods and probably uh, destroying <laughs> houses and probably killing some of these person and animals. So, uh, very good that you are now using uh, uh, more species the same area uh, so that uh, the, wa the, the water uh, no, the function of the forest in the mountain uh, in uh, preserving conservation water and preventing floods in the lower uh, the farms in the lower in the lower uh, elevations lower areas is maintained now again you say there are springs, so there are rivers and creeks. Yes. Uh, when I was with the Web Industrial Development Corporation and affiliates in uh, Agusan North and Agusan Sur, I was then the field manager. Uh, what I did was influence the people, the Caimineros, to, uh, re to stop destroying the forest, but instead uh, make use of the creeks that are approximately two meters deep. We compartmentalize and convert this into peace funds. But up every wall of the compartments, uh, there is a hole to be irrigation, uh, to make use of the water in the creek as irrigation. So this water is used for irrigation as well as for uh, peace fund, production of fish, snails, and whatever. Uh, water uh, animals. So, the people there, the Nakusa North Nakusa Sur, were convinced that this is a better practice than uh, uh, what you call this, uh, very hard labor in uh, smuggling or in kind of making. But the, the, you have the free water, and you have the free irrigation, and you have the, uh, very nice uh, materials for, uh, for birthday parties. You have the fish, the, the water product. So probably uh, a researcher, some researchers of use, uh, they will make use of this compartmentalization of the rivers, of creek, the creeks, shallow creeks, so that this could produce uh, water for irrigation for the farms and fish and other water products for the people. Could be a good uh, enterprise for Thank you very Thank much, Dr. Omisha, for that insight. We can now call on the lady at the back. And then I'll go to the back. I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to go to the back. Okay, so I'm Linda Rigubio from the Ecology Forestry and Natural Resources, in particular, the Home Center for Mountain Ecosystems. Uh, I'm not a forester, but a wife of a forester. <laughs> and uh, I know that uh, our speaker, I know that our speaker is a forestry graduate, so in particular, I know that you pretty well know about Mount Makiling. Okay. 
So it seems we have uh, similar um, functions or similar uh, mandate. Kung kami ay magpakiling, kayo ay magpanahaw. Yes. Diba? Tama po yun. So, um, the, I have seen in your uh, strategies, sourcing, image uh, enhancing, capability building, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, in our experience here in Mount Makini, uh, if I remember it right, I started working here in the what we call Makini Conservation Education Program. Now, are in your uh, Mount Banao Conservation Program, are you not involving elementary schools? Because pretty sure I know that you are teaching your students, the college students, um, conservation education and ecological, whatever. But are you not involving elementary schools surrounding Mount Banahaw uh, to really one of your uh, IEC, kumbaga, sila yung inyong isang iniisip na makakatulog? Because uh, I believe that uh, itong mga bata, for as long as we have children or babies born in, day in and day out, uh, they will be the element, one of the elements na makakatulong sa sustainable ecosystem management. Because bata pa lang yan, they know for sure na, ah, kailangan pa lang conserve nito, ganito, ganito, because marami pala ito na itutulong, something like that. So, I believe so na mag-start tayo sa mga bata. If I got it right, again, uh, meron pa kami tinatawag na MOU pa kami with the Ed, uh, used to be Bureau Public Schools pa. So, we are training teachers and then pupils, we are developing teaching guys and so on and so forth. Thank you so much. Uh, salamat po sa, sa suggestion. If you will, if you can read from uh, the bottom of my slide. Uh, building people, providing quality education, promoting a healthy environment. This is the vision of the university. So, uh, and promoting a healthy environment, it is uh, stipulated in our vision about the conservation and management of Mount Anahaw. So we start, we are starting with our own uh, pupils because the university is also maintaining uh, 500 students, uh, 500 pupils in elementary and, uh, and high school. So they are given education about Mount Panahaw. Our high school students are also involved in the, in the tree planting activity because before they can graduate, they have to plant trees in, in Mount Panahaw. And also, uh, camping uh, during summer, they have this uh, environmental science class, and they have the camping activity in Mount Panahaw. So those are our our efforts. And if you also remember in my uh, presentation, the establishment of Mount Panahaw, the Lopat Botanical Garden, this is an easy to approach, and we are uh, we are really targeting the, the pupils, not only in the town of Kes, but also in the vicinity of Mount Panahaw because when they when they uh, learn, when they see the species, they can easily uh, recognize them because they are available in the garden and they can also uh, tell their parents that yeah, these are the species, these are already endangered species or these are rare species and we have to uh, we have to protect them. So we have this uh, activity, but as what I've said, it is concentrated only in our university. But thank you for the suggestion that we have, because we also have uh, some elementary schools, public schools in the area, so we might as well involve them in, the, in our high uh, school. Thank you. Yes, I'm last one. I know with much interest, interest your, um, one of your important uh, outputs, uh, which are uh, GIS maps, uh, uh, to what extent have these been disseminated and uh, utilized by the local government units surrounding uh, the university in their local club? Uh, we started the GIS map only for zero month, three years, three years pa lang. We started with the coconut areas in Mount Panahaw. So we have map all the coconut areas in Mount Panahaw and we submitted the, the maps to the LGD of Lumban. And now we are starting with the different plantations that we have established. 
uh, to determine also the whether we are successful or not in our representation of in, in establishment of the Islam nations. So, ganun pa lang po kami. We started with our students, with the faculty members, and but we have already submitted the result of our GIS uh, uh, mapping to the local government or so only for the coconut plantation in in Mount Panahaw, in King Thank you, Mong Cecil. At this point, 